So today we're talking about those little guys in your gut. Why is your gut health important? What's in there and what does it do for us? So first of all, I want to tell you that not all microbes and bacteria are bad. And I think that's really easy to forget in a year that we've just been through in a global pandemic where we're like, I kill all the microbes, I sanitize your hands all the time. Like most microbes that live in our skin, in our bodies that we breathe in and out, 95, 99% of them, they are harmless or beneficial to us. And actually, there's a very large number in our bodies and they're mainly centered in our large intestine. And the reason why we have there, some of the benefits that they provide us, they actually synthesize some neurotransmitters for us. So they're directly linked to things like our mental health, our immunity, and also our long-term risk of many chronic diseases. So today I want to give you some really simple tips as to how we can um, improve our gut health and look after those microbes that live there. So I have six tips for you, plus some really simple things to be getting going with. You know I like to boil things down to two minutes for you. So get yourself comfortable, maybe jot some of these, these, these things down, get yourself a journal and let's dive in. So number one, the first thing that we can do to improve our gut health is eat more fibre. So the recommendation is for 30 grams a day. And most of us are nowhere near that. Some of us are only getting a third or two thirds of that. Now fiber is really important because even though we can't digest it, that is essentially the food for our gut bacteria. And some of you might associate fiber with digestive discomforts. So if you were to like rapidly take this advice and rapidly increase your fiber tomorrow, then you might get things like bloating, wind, um, you digestive discomfort. So when you're looking to increase fiber in your diet, please do it slowly and your body will adapt to that increase in fiber. If you are thinking, well, what is like 30 grams a day looking like? I don't really want to do the maths and start reading all the labels, fair dues. You could try something like aiming for 30 plant-based foods per week. And that can remember include whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, pulses and legumes. And if you know we're near there, then that's okay. Just look at what you've eaten this week and add one more thing next week. You can slowly increase from that. So for our gut health, increase fiber. Number two, reduce stress. Reduce stress. Now I definitely notice this, when I am stressed, it has a big effect on how well I'm able to digest things, how comfortable I feel after eating. And I'd like you to think about it like this. If you have a car and you're trying to put fuel in it, you're trying to put your petrol or your diesel in, if you were to try and put that in while that car was moving down the motorway, then it's not going to be very effective or efficient. And it's the same thing with our bodies. If we try put in food on the go, like grab lunch whilst we're working, eat in the car, then our body hasn't had a, chan uh, a chance to transition into rest and digest mode. It's called that for a reason. So as much as you can slow down around eating, it's gonna help your body reduce its stress start to actually digest the food rather than staying in a fight or flight doing mode um, whilst you're putting fuel into it. I really advocate breathing as part of this one. Like if you can't take your hour lunch break, then even just five deep breaths before you start eating will really help here. Um, number three, and I'm really sorry, this one's gonna be unpopular, but um, eat less sugar and sweetness. Okay, so if you have a really high sugar diet and it's added sugar specifically, so not necessarily like fruits that we're concerned with here, or sweeteners, um, both of those could, could have potentially not so great an effect on your gut bacteria. Um, sweeteners in animal studies have potentially been shown uh, to be linked to some not great responses, potentially increases in um, like health risks long term. Um, so it's something that you need to be mindful of, but potentially not one that you'd like to start with. It's something that you can play with, reducing the amount of sugar, reducing the amount of sweeteners. 
um, that are in your diet. Number four, sleep and move more. I bet this one doesn't come as a surprise because sleeping and moving more is going to reduce our stress and inflammation. Um, and both of those are really gonna feed into just our general health, how we're feeling at the moment, long term, um, but also in terms of our gut. Number five, maybe controversially given all the marketing that's around these days, but you probably have no need for a probiotic or even a prebiotic. So probiotic means it's an actual live bacterial culture that you take. So think like those little yogurt drinks and you can also like buy um, pills for instance with them in. For most people, that bacteria is not going to reach the gut alive and therefore it's not really going to have a beneficial effect. The words, the science is, is that say for instance you've been um, poorly, if you've just taken um, a dose of antibiotics, there is evidence to support that probiotics could um, help in that situation. Prebiotics are something that um, they don't contain the live bacterial strains, but they can help um, foster the gut bacteria that are already there. Um, so fermented foods um, might be and something that you could try there. Um, but for most people, not necessary. Okay, ah, number six, avoid unnecessary antibiotics and disinfectants. Um, antibiotic use, hopefully, like in the last few years, has been coming down, um, but knowing that um, only take them when utterly necessary. Um, and then also disinfectants around the home, and um, potentially just be aware of where you're using them. You know, you might want to use them on your door handles, but is it utterly necessary in your laundry? Just have more intention, more awareness about where you're choosing to use them and why you're not. And then finally, some super simple tips for you, like things that you can do right now that's gonna take barely any effort in one minute or less. And before I give you those, make sure you head down to the description section. Click on the link there because I have a ton of free stuff that I can send you. I can literally be landing in your inbox in seconds to help you step into your full picture of health. So go click on one of those links and I'll be sending some stuff your way really, really soon. Okay, our super simple tips. Number one, add olive oil. Their olive oil over even rapeseed oil, any other oil type has very high amounts of something called polyphenols, which our gut bacteria love. Personally, I also love the taste of olive oil. It features heavily in things like the Mediterranean diet. So it's a really super simple swap that you can make um, to, to increase our, our gut health. And as I said, remember, even something like rapeseed oil, which quite often is used interchangeably with, with olive oil, it doesn't have the same level of polyphenols. So specifically in the aspect of gut health, it doesn't have the same benefits. Tip number two, um, buy some mixed colors. Mixed colors of vegetables. So say for instance, instead of just buying a pack of red peppers, buy um, a red and a yellow and a green pepper in a pack. Um, buy packets of mixed vegetables as opposed to just one. And it's just a really, really simple way that requires no extra thought of just increasing the variety and helping you get to those 30 plant-based foods a week. So buy mixed colors of things. Um, third one, try some easy mix-ups. Again, with the purpose of increasing variety. So say for instance, you eat porridge or overnight oats every morning, mix up your toppings, try different fruits, nuts, seed combinations. They are all going to be amazing ways to increase variety without huge mammoth efforts of trying new recipes and sourcing new ingredients. Just mix up some toppings and you can do it on salads as well as an easy way to gain some more fiber, some more variety. And finally, 10 deep breaths. So linked into bringing the body into rest and digest so that you can really take in the fuel that you need, reduce stress, reduce inflammation. Breathe into the belly, breathe in through the nose if you can and focus on this inhale, exhale. And then finally, when we look after our gut health, we're not talking shit, short term fixes and um, like magic pills, silver bullets, hooray, it's all brilliant overnight. Like you've got to think long term with this. 
Um, if you invest in improving your gut health, then yes, you might see changes in weeks. Um, but you know, ultimately it's investing in that health for months and for years. And if you step off the gas pedal, those habits, you stop moving, choosing the variety, then yeah, your gut health is gonna suffer and, and like potentially go backwards. So we're thinking long term change here because a healthy gut, healthy bacteria means healthy you, happy you.